Oh, I start and then so okay so welcome welcome to everybody for the the eighth webinar in the Cothers so this is already and then the time is flying and this is already our uh, eighth uh, webinar in this case uh, the, the subject related to the the first uh, uh, measures package anti-COVID Spanish touristic regions webinar and uh, we have the pleasure to have with us uh, Ana Álvarez Sostres as a manager of the, of the European market uh, for related to Madrid Destino. So then we will have, uh, as usual, one hour uh, webinar. Now I will give the words uh, to, to, to the president in order to, to, to start with. But before, so of course we are doing English, but we will also have with us, uh, our co third uh, member, Dusan, that will support us with the check, and then we can really, uh, all the questions that are going to be arisen during the, the webinar will be managed also by, by Dusan. So, so now I will give the, the words uh, to, to, to Carlos, and I also, of course, want to, 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 to give the thanks to, to, to Anna to really be with us, because it's very important uh, to, to, to be in this, uh, finalizing COVID times in a way, we start with the tourists. So then we choose, we have chosen this uh, topic as uh, this uh, webinar topic. And now I give the word to, to Carlos. So president, please do the official watching of this webinar. Thank you, Jaime. Dobry den, dami a panove. Predetsi, hetsi, projevit, uprim no urrados, se organizat se tohoto cesco espanyeskeho online fora. I menem espanyeski obhotni komori de Czechke Republice mohu rič, je mate nasi pleno podporu a uprimnou ve djecnost sa učas na takoven seminari. Hello everyone, I would like to express my sincere satisfaction with the organization of this Czech Spanish Online Tourist Forum. I hope that you thoroughly enjoy and profit from this seminar. Vitejte, welcome. Sam. Dobrý den, já budu mluvit česky. Mé jméno je Dušan Popelka a jsem člen správní rady Španělské obchodní komory v České republice, která, jak řekl již, organizuje semináře věnované mimo jiné ekonomickým tématům spojeným se Španělskem a s Českou republikou. A protože turistika jako taková patří mezi nejvýznamnější oblasti ekonomického života obou zemí. Toto je první seminář, první webinář, který věnujeme Španělsku a České republice, co se turistiky týče. Semináře se budou organizovat v závislosti na tom, jaké geografické části Španělska budeme probírat a tentokrát se jedná o webinář věnovaný Madridu. Kolegyně Ana z Madridu vám potom, co já ukončím svoji úvodní prezentaci, bude povídat o Madridu s tím, že viděno z mého pohledu, znám Španělsko velmi dobře, hlavní potenciál pro turistiku má Madrid například v těchto oblastech. Jedna z nich je poznání Madridu jako takového, celkového, dále kulturní turistika, turistika kongresová a veletrhy, dále jazyková turistika a jazykové kurzy, vzdělání. Nemůžeme zapomenout ani na cesty typu cesty za vínem nebo za gourmet zážitky, které Madrid a madridská oblast poskytuje v hojné míře. Další oblastí je sportovní turistika a to jak aktivní, tak i pasivní. Co myslím pasivní turistikou je třeba návštěva sportovních akcí, jako může být fotbalové utkání Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid, nebo Vuelta España, cyklistický závod a i jiné akce. A pasivní a aktivní turistika sportovní může spočívat v přípravě sportovních týmů, a podobných aktivitách. Madrid se nachází v centru Španělska, takže existují i možnosti pro ty, kteří přicestují do Madridu, navštívit okolí Madridu. Nabízí se různé destinace, které jsou blízko, jako například Perla, 
mezi městy Španělska a Toledo. A to je asi tak všechno, co se mého úvodu týče. A nyní bych předal ještě slovo paní Aně Alvarez. Ana, půjdeš a vlastu Laura. Hello, I am trying to connect the through the through the. Hi. Well, first of all, hello everyone. Thank you for being here and thank you for giving me this chance of uh, sharing with you what Madrid has to offer. I'm still trying to connect through the Zoom by my computer. So maybe, Jose Luis, we can start with the video because in the meanwhile, I am opening the presentation about Madrid. So uh, we have just recently launched yesterday our last campaign video in English. And as I am still trying to connect me through the computer instead of the phone, uh, it could be useful to not have the people waiting uh, to connect the video, if possible. Is it possible, Jose Luis? Hello, Jose Luis. Uh, well, well. In any case, I will uh, start giving you some data about Madrid. I'm so sorry because I'm trying to connect the presentation. Okay, here we have Jose Luis sharing the presentation. Oh, the video. Perfect. As I see, there is no voice in the video. In any case, uh, I'll I'll pass you later uh, both the presentation, the link for the presentation and um, for the video. Um, well, what they are doing is that there is uh, more than 10 plants. Uh, what they are saying is that there is, 10 plants are not enough in Madrid. Uh, the, you can reach 40, 50 plants very easily because there are so many options that you can do when, when you visit uh, the city of Madrid. So it's starting uh, in a cultural place, then obviously going to a, music, uh, a musical, then again, uh, spending the night in a rooftop terrace or enjoying some shopping. So the, the, there are plenty of options here. Um, I'm so sorry, Jose Luis, but I don't manage to get into the conference by the computer. So you will have to show the presentation. I'll be talking if it, that's okay with you. There must be something with the antivirus or something. But I don't know why. Hello. Okay. If if Jose Luis, if you can share the, the, the presentation, I have it open in my computer, but unfortunately I'm, I'm unable to open it in the piece in, in, in and share it with everyone. So uh, okay. Thank you very much. I will explain you some data about Madrid. Uh, if life were a city, it would be Madrid. Uh, later when I pass you the video, you will see uh, the reason why uh, we have uh, the reason why we have this claim, um, 
uh, it's obviously because there are so many options that it's difficult to choose only one plan here in Madrid. Uh, if we pass to the next um, diapo, we will see some highlights about the city of Madrid. First, Madrid is the second biggest city in Europe, right after London in Paris. It has also been chosen uh, by the magazine Monocle in 2017 as one of the 10 best destinations in the world to live. Is uh, together with Barcelona has been chosen the second best destination for shopping in Europe, being the first one the uh, London in the United Kingdom, with the main difference of being able to pay in euros, which is much more convenient. Then a very important uh, data about Madrid is the weather. Uh, here we enjoy excellent weather. We have at least 260 days of sun every year, which uh, conditionates a little bit the life of the city because uh, whoever, has visit, uh, whoever has visited Madrid uh, has probably aware that most of the life that we do is outside in the streets. We love our terraces, we love our streets, and we spend most of the, of, the, of the time visiting different areas of the city because Madrid is a city with 21 different neighborhoods and each one has its very own different personality. For instance, if you go to the Salamanca district, you might find that restaurants, even if we are following Spanish recipes, are of a higher level. Uh, they you will probably find less tapas than in other districts of Madrid, and it happens the same with shopping. For instance, if you visit uh, Malasaña district, you will find a much more alternative um, uh, shops with uh, maybe secondhand shops. While if you are um, in in, for instance, the, the, the literary quarter, you will have find that mostly uh, there are um, antique shops, libraries, so uh, that kind of, uh, of, uh, of options you will have. Uh, it's also the second uh, city in the world with the most expensive green areas, being the first one, Tokyo, and is the second safest capital in Europe. The first one is Vienna. Vienna. So uh, uh, it's that uh, all together, all combined makes that life in Madrid is mostly outside of the house. Uh, if we also pass the diapo, uh, what we have been doing in the meanwhile is to, um, we have been developing, as you may know, Madrid has never closed during these pandemics, uh, besides uh, at the beginning, uh, on the three first months of the pandemic that was from March, March until June. From that moment on, um, from that moment on since last June, uh, we have never um, been closed. Madrid is a city that has kept its culture, um, its culture um, alive. If every museum was uh, open, the Royal Opera House was open. Restaurants and bars were open with restrictions, but still, and the idea of the government of the city and the region is that culture is not contagious. In the meanwhile, what we have been doing is to implement a specific plans and protocols to guarantee that uh, Madrid is a safe destination. Uh, rather, you are, it doesn't matter if you are a tourist or a local, uh, you can keep enjoying the city. Um, that's why we have developed these protocols. Practically, we have a specific protocols for every stage that a tourist can touch when they come to Madrid. If we pass the diapos, you will see that in our website, uh, this is the directly Madrid Tourism Board website, uh, you will find a specific landing page for everything that is related to COVID. Here you will find not only these uh, guidelines or protocols that I was talking about, and we will see further now, but also specific uh, tips on health and sanitary measures, or even economic help that the government is giving to the tourist so sector to overcome this situation. Now we pass to the protocols. As I was saying, there are there is one protocol for each specific um, segment that a tourist can touch. The first one, uh, if we pass the diapo, will be of course the airport. Uh, when you get to, well, there is airport and there are uh, general guidelines that uh, we can see, well, it's a little bit obvious, but maybe reminding people keeping the, the safety distance or disinfecting their hands or uh, being in the marked spots in the streets, because if, for instance, you go to the underground here, 
you will find you will find that everything is signed. Uh, there are signs in the floor to guarantee that distance is kept, and and in general, um, these protocols uh, have proven to to be to be strong enough because if we take into consideration that most places have been closed for for many months, Madrid hasn't, and the level of incidence is not uh, bigger than you know in, in any other capital in Europe. So. As I was saying, these are the protocols for airports and general recommendation, but we have also protocols passing the DIAPO. We will have protocols for uh, transfers, hotels, uh, guided tours, museums. Uh, mainly, uh, our, the main um, difference is the limitation of, of public that can be um, admitted in one place at a time. For instance, the tour guide guidelines is a maximum of 10 people, then uh, you cannot you use your earplugs or that kind of uh, measures. Uh, there are not recommended tips. You cannot be giving a, a brochure or a left or a leaflet. Uh, you would rather be given a QR code in which you can download all the information you are going to, to need and so on. Of course, hotel and tourists are a, differ, a little bit different because these are the minimum protocols that can be that can be completed. Uh, there are other hotels that have more strict protocols in order to guarantee the, the security of their of their clients. For instance, there are there is one hotel in particular that offers to every client that is staying at the hotel the possibility of doing a complimentary PCR to guarantee that no other guests are contagious. Um, well, we can see here all the protocols if we go forward a little bit. Here we have, we should have uh, also museums and heritage sites, food uh, service. Uh, food service right now is, um, is the probably together with the nightlife is the one with more strict protocols. Uh, the, the, there is a closing time here in Madrid that is at one in the, in the evening, but uh, there is also limitation in the number of people that can sit together in a place. Of course, all this always uh, remembering that in Spain is absolutely mandatory to wear a um, mask uh, outside or inside unless you are practicing a sport. So whether you are in a restaurant, you are supposed to be wearing the mask at all times, unless you are eating or drinking. Uh, the maximum capacity for restaurants is six people inside and eight people outside, outside in the same table. And as I was saying, um, there is also a time limit in which everyone has to leave at one in the evening and the last client can be admitted at midnight. Uh, there is also a specific protocol for uh, Renfe. Uh, as you know, uh, well, there is nightlife. Uh, when we talk about nightlife, we are not really talking so much about disco, but maybe flamenco shows, music shows, and other restaurants that offer a live show during dinner, for instance. Uh, so they have to have specific protocols beside the ones that the restaurant have. The underground in Madrid has been fully working all time. And well, there are no no bigger problems. Only some some stations have limits in the number of people that can access that station at the same time. Uh, if it's a very crowded point in the city. Um, well, this is a little bit about the protocols because there are others that are maybe uh, less used, like the amusement parks. If I'm not wrong, is the next one. Um, in any case, as I was saying, all these protocols can be directly downloaded from our website. The, we have also created a video so uh, you can see how everything that a tourist touch, touches uh, will be safe and secure. Can we pass now? Yeah, these are amusement park and Renfe guidelines. Uh, for Renfe, it's also very important. As you know, Madrid is in the city center of Spain and therefore is the natural not to connect to any other city in Spain. For instance, uh, it's very easy to visit Seville from Madrid in, within two hours, 20 minutes, or Valencia within one hour, 30 minutes. We'll even allow you to go spend the day at the beach, eat uh, some rice, and come back to Madrid for the uh, night musical. Um, Renfe, beside that, I, as I was saying, uh, Madrid is the center of the high speed network in Spain. 
But uh, this year, uh, these protocols are for Renfrey. It's very important to remember that this year, SNCF, the French uh, train company, and Trenitalia, both of them are starting to operate uh, high speed uh, trains in Spain. Initially, they are doing some specific routes, but uh, obviously they, their intention is to, to be increasing this route every year. And even if they are using Renfe rail, railways, um, there is going to be a competition there in the prices and in the offer. So it's good to have more choices and more, more options if you want to move around with Spain. Now we pass to the connectivity between um, Madrid and the Czech Republic right now. Uh, we are having uh, two companies operating uh, this flight. It's Siberia and Ryanair. There are no specific requirements to leave the Czech Republic, um, but uh, as you know, we have started already with, uh, even if Spain already has the, the digital COVID passport, not all European countries has already implemented it because the, the final day uh, was expected the 1st July. Uh, in Spain, you can come in if you have a vaccination certificate. Uh, if you haven't had both doses of the vaccination, uh, you will need to uh, complete a PCR proof, or otherwise you can also present a recovery uh, informed certificate in which uh, specifies that during the last, last three months, you have passed and recovered from, from the virus. Only with this one of these three things, uh, you can uh, enter Spain and uh, you, you will have to fulfill a form that is an online form. It's true that right now uh, these are the, the requirement, requirements to enter Spain and we have the stronger requirements to go back to the Czech Republic because you will probably have to pass a quarantine depending on um, if you have a vaccination certificate or a diagnosed certificate or or which one have you chosen. Uh, in any case, it's uh, a very uh, good uh, opportunity to enjoy a, a, a city break uh, because uh, from the 1st July, it's going to be expected that uh, all European countries are going to be using the, the digital passport. If we pass the diapo, we can see uh, the new and exciting things that we can find now in Madrid. Um, this is the Four Seasons Hotel and Galeria Canalejas it is the new uh, luxury jewel of the city of Madrid. It's a very exciting period because even if we have been one year and a half uh, holding on to see what's, what happens with the virus, in the meanwhile, the city of Madrid has kept evolving and uh, we have used this time to 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 start big openings uh, and it's very exciting for us because it's the landing of big brands and big labels in the city of Madrid especially in terms of accommodation uh, as I was saying the um, this is changing a little bit the luxury face of Madrid as you know Madrid have most of the luxury and five-star hotels located at, in the financial district because uh, it's where they were most requested while in the city center, there were few um, very iconic uh, five-star hotels, but very few. Uh, now, uh, starting with the inauguration and the restoration of the Four Seasons is the restoration of seven historical buildings. Um, here we have a hotel with 200 uh, rooms and suites. Each one is completely different from the other because talking about historical buildings, we cannot touch the original spaces. Together with the Four Seasons is also the opening of Galeria Canalejas. Galeria Canalejas is a new shopping mall focused absolutely on luxury brands like Hermes, Manolo Blahnik. It's going to have 50,000 square meters of shops, but beside that, there are also 4,000 4, square meter destination to, destined to gastronomy. For this, they have hired uh, three chefs that together gather three Michelin stars each one is open um, a fine restaurant, like for instance, uh, the bunker is moving, the, the chef of the bunker is moving to Complejo Canalejas. Beside these three fine restaurants, there is also going to be a, a gourmet market, let's call it, um, 
in which there are going to be uh, 20 different spaces in which you can enjoy a tapa or a, most, uh, or a small dish in which you can taste several flavors, flavors of Madrid, uh, going from the most classical flavors, like it could be cocido, to the most modern techniques. Or, so it's, it's very exciting. It's expected to, to be opening. Uh, at the beginning, it's opening the, the food court. And by September, it's opening the rest of the Galeria Canaleja Center. Then uh, we pass to the four season, and I was, as I was saying, in the next diapo, we will see the hotel that is the contrary corner of the Galeria Canalejas. At the four season, as I was saying, there are 200 uh, rooms, of which 50, almost 50 are uh, suites, but uh, there are also five different spaces to enjoy gastronomy. And for this, they have hired Danny Garcia, uh, who has closed his restaurant in Malaga, who was awarded three Michelin stars because most of the chefs are now biding for Madrid and the gastronomy turnout that it's uh, having the city. This is also the case uh, passing uh, through the next, uh, uh, as I was saying, uh, Mandarin. Uh, if we pass the Diapo, we'll find the Mandarin Oriental also a big restructuration after three years works. And now they have opened three different spaces for lunch in which the head of them is Kike da Costa. And in the next month, we are also having some exciting openings like the Hard Rock Cafe, it's in the next Diapo. And, uh, and it will open on the 1st July. Also the w, w, JW Madrid by Marriott that is opening next, next year. And also for the football fans, we will find a Chris Tiano Ronaldo Hotel in Gran Vía, that is going to be a five-star hotel. Beside that, uh, we have a big uh, restructurations also in the city. For instance, the Plaza de España Renewal that will give us a pedestrian area starting in the Plaza de España until um, the Royal Palace. So it's going to be a very nice walk in which you can pass through the Templo de Devot or other icon iconic places from the city of Madrid. As I think I'm running a little bit of time, just to a little bit to tell you that um, the Retiro Park and the Art Walk, who are our next diapo, are candidates for being World Heritage Site. Uh, the decision is going to be taken uh, the 20th of July. We are having here the evaluators of UNESCO. And um, well, we truly hope that Madrid is going to win this uh, recognition because uh, truly uh, the, the, the Retiro Park and the Art Walk are unique in the world. As I was saying, Madrid is the second greenest, uh, the second city in the world with greenest area. I had just added some, so you can see that there are other places like the Royal Botanical Gardens or the Bot Temple, who, by the way, is the oldest building in the city of Madrid and was given by the government of the Egypt to the city as a uh, thank you gift. Regarding gastronomy, Madrid has so many options. Uh, it's a city of traditions, it's a city of tapas, it's a city of gastro markets, and it's also the city in which we can find the oldest restaurant in the world, according to the Guinness Book of Records, but also so many options like um, other options like old century restaurants that are 14 in the city, or iconic restaurants like might be the the Diverso by David Muñoz, who is awarded three Michelin stars. Actually, in Madrid, if we talk about Michelin stars, uh, there are, uh, is, uh, we can see in the next one, there are 20 restaurants in which in total share 30 Michelin stars. This is only in the city of Madrid. If we, are, if we admit also the, the region, there will be 22 Michelin star restaurants um, uh, in Madrid. Uh, some of them are in iconic places, so there are fusion, so there are plenty of, of options. You can find plenty of specialties like more uh, classic Spanish recipes or modern like um, Japanese restaurants uh, awarded Michelin stars like it might be Kabuki, for instance. Regarding Madrid wines, in Madrid there are four uh, wine denominations of origin. And even if uh, until re very recently, for maybe Madrid was not very well known for for the for its for its wines, 
especially because we are very close to Ribera del Duero, who is a very well-known area of Spain for the, for the wines. Uh, you should know that there are 30 wineries in Madrid that can be visited. Some of them you can even can even be reached by underground or by public transport, which is actually very convenient if you want to if you don't want to drive back home. Um, another uh, characteristic of Madrid is the rooftop terraces. Practically every building in the city center, especially in the area of Gran Vía, you will find in the upper floors that there is a rooftop terrace uh, with uh, a bar or a restaurant. So it has been um, very useful, especially during the times in which uh, inside was, uh, was limited to four people. But uh, it's also a good option to visit Madrid from the sky. As you know, uh, what stay here in Spain is from Madrid to the sky due to the beauties, uh, to the beauty of the, of the sky in Madrid. Same, same sky that Velázquez was in love with. Um, uh, Madrid is the capital of flamenco. Is uh, together with the, um, with Andalusia. Obviously, the flamenco has its roots in Andalusia. But uh, as any big show that we want to put on, uh, Madrid is the capital. So any big artists have to come uh, to succeed also in, in Madrid. And that's why we say that it's the capital of flamenco, because sooner or, le or later, all big flamenco shows will pass by the capital of Spain. Um, later, uh, if I don't have time in, during the presentation, I'll send you also the video because it's uh, it's, um, it's magic what uh, the Corral de la Moreria, which is the only flamenco show in the world, awarded also one Michelin star, uh, what they have done inside the Museo del Prado as a way of combining uh, well, the painting and the flamenco, which is amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link to that video because it's worth uh, to view it. And finally, what we have been doing is trying to be also sustainable as in any way we can. So that's why, for instance, when you visit Madrid, we recommend not to buy. And if you want, if you go and visit one of our shops in one of the tourist information centers, um, you will not find the typical souvenirs. What you will find right now in our shops is all in Madrid made products. For instance, uh, there are so not only old century restaurants, but there are also so many old century shops in Madrid that keep uh, working their crafts uh, and their products in, in, in the same way that it used to be one century ago, like it could be Cape Sesenia, Cape Sesenia in which you can see how they design and do from scratch a uh, Spanish cape or um, the typical Spanish espadril uh, in which there are many shops in the city center that you can still see how they are done manually and so. Um, well, I hope you have found it interesting. Um, and I give you some extra minutes to, to see if you have any questions. I'll leave some minutes and I'll pass you both the presentation and both videos, the one that we saw at the beginning that unfortunately has no sound, and the one at the Prado Museum uh, with, the, with the performance of Corral de la Moreria. Thank you very much. Hello? Yep. Is there any question? Or? Um, 
when the tour return from Spain, you will not be requested a test to exit Spain. You will be requested a test to enter any other country, probably. When they are returning from Spain to the Czech Republic, uh, not here in Spain, you will not be requested um, uh, a test, but probably you will be requested a test whenever you get uh, to Prague. Yeah. Uh, uh, hello, Anna. So now I have, because uh, we had also again some challenges for the technical. So, yeah, in relation with this question for the, the test, I have here another one because you commented that anyway now, since uh, since June 7th, uh, is needed in a way to do the, the an, an, could be an antigen or a PCR test that, that, that uh, would be valid. But how many hours in advance is needed? Does 72 I hours. Sorry, can you repeat? 72 hours. So 72, so the same as before. Seven, because I was hearing about 48, so you are sure that is 72? Well, 72 is valid for 72 hours, but if you can get it in 24, 24 hours, you will get inside. The thing is okay, that- Okay, but 72 is okay. 72. Okay, that's good. Then we have another question here that is related uh, so I, I think I have the answer, but of course it's good that it, that if you do it is uh, in relation with the um, uh, how safe is Madrid at night and any area if it's needed to be avoided for the tourist. Well, Madrid is one of the safest safest destination in in Europe, as I say. Right after Vienna is the second safest capital in Europe, and and normally uh, there is no dangerous neighborhood. Uh, obviously, it depends a little bit on what you are doing. If you are doing something illegal, you might get in trouble. But normally, there is no problem whether you are a man or a woman. You can freely move around Madrid without any concern. Good. Then, uh, yeah, if I, I see another question that, because um, you were commenting, of course, in a way, a little bit uh, the, the, that Madrid now is one of the best uh, cities in Europe to visit about capital city, what I mean. So then in this case, you have to, to, to say something in relation to Madrid uh, compared with uh, Paris or London. What you would say as uh, our competitive, really competitive uh, uh, feature eh, for, for going to Madrid and not go to Paris and not go to London, for example. Well, uh, for me, there is a, a winning point that is the 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 the, the people. As people here, uh, the character of people. Madrid is a way of life. You will find Madrid is a city made of many nations, many regions. No one is really from Madrid, um, so we are very used to to receive people and welcome people. I think that's the the, the that character of the people from of people from Madrid of the Madrilenians is one of the of the key factors. There are also others, for instance, uh, well, uh, if we compare Madrid with London, uh, uh, I will have to mention the weather here with both, with, Capi uh, with Paris and London. I have to talk about the weather here, it's much better. And uh, probably I would have to say, and this is a personal opinion, that Madrid is in, in, many, in many things an easier city because well, I'm, I, I, I used to live in London and I used to live in Paris. And I have to say that uh, distances both, in both cities are very, very long, while in Madrid is not the case. In Madrid, everything seems quite um, close to each other, every neighbor. Obviously, there are other neighborhoods that are outside. But what I, have, what I mean is the tourist areas, the malls, these city areas are very close to one to each other. So it's very easy to visit the city even walking. So I think that's also a winning point because it allows to visit, to really visit the city, not being underground, not being in the public transport. You can stroll the streets, enjoy the life of the city, enjoy the shops. So uh, that's also for me a, a, a key factor. Good. Then uh, there is another question in relation with the, uh, yeah, because now we are yet, of course, with the COVID uh, situation. So. So how is the, the, the hotel capacity and availability on these times in Madrid and then also the, the, the pricing in this case? So you could comment. 
Well, uh, right now we uh, the, the openings are not uh, due to it's simply due to the demand. Uh, they are obviously we cannot request NH who has so many hotels in Madrid to open all at the same time because they are opening according to the demand. Right now we have around 70% of hotels open. Uh, they have lower occupation rates for the moment. Uh, let's say that they are around 30 or 40% of their occupation. So it's also a good time to get uh, good, uh, good, uh, good prices for the, for the accommodation. And beside that, uh, well, with all these openings in hotel that has increased the number of beds uh, in 10,000 beds, Oh, we are uh, well situated right now in, in terms of uh, availability of accommodation. Good. Then, I, I, now I don't remember if you commented during the presentation, but uh, is there plan any, we can say, big uh, feria, big uh, forum in Madrid in the, in the next uh, months? Do you know if... Uh, uh, there are, there are plenty. Uh, I, I can send you the agenda of fairs and shows, but uh, we have started on the 19th Mar May, sorry, was the first trade show that was live and it was the tourism um, fair, uh, Fitur. It was, hold, uh, it was held from the 19th May until the 23rd. And right after that, we celebrated Madrid Fusion. And it was all presencia, in presence, it was not virtual. And um, until now, the media and the news have been reported any any increase in the incident. So uh, we are thinking that it's possible to maintain the first. And, and if Emma has uh, the calendar ready to 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 be kept, so we are we are holding. Can, can, can we say can we say also Anna that the the measures anti COVID uh, for this. Uh, this kind of events uh, yeah, are well, they the, easy managed uh, for the people they that managed to work. I mean, we have to say that they were obviously more strict than other occasions. For instance, the, the, the limitation of public in Fitur was limited to 40% of the capability. Um, the different destination couldn't have food or drinks because of it, it would imply to, to take off the mask. But uh, it, it worked really well, and actually, people were very, very happy to be seeing each other again. Good. Then, uh, yeah, I don't know now if there is any question in Czech. Uh, Dusan, do you know if there is any question in Czech that you can really? Because unfortunately, Nelubin Czechy. So, if you can, uh, Dusan, if there is, you can manage in case of. No, there is not any question in yeah. chat. Audio, I'm, ¿se me escucha? No. Sí, perfecto. Ajá. Había una pregunta. Uh, which season of the year is the best uh, for traveling to Madrid uh, as far as both uh, uh, events and economic, economic aspect? Uh, well, it depends a little bit on your interest as well. For instance, uh, obviously the low season in Madrid is July and August. And we all would say a little bit of July also because Madrid one has one of the most important prides in the world. But uh, let's say that September is a, a, a quite busy month here in Madrid, September, October. Then it depends a little bit on what are your interests, because if you are interested in seeing bullfighting, you cannot come in September, you will have to come in May because that's the season of bullfighting. If you are looking for tennis, you will have to come in May because, or in October, because that, those are the dates of the, of the tournament. So I would say that the spring is always a good option. Um, Autumn is also a good option, but for instance, I love the, the Christmas in, in Madrid and, and the markets and the lighting. And so, uh, and summer is so funny with the local parties, the local festivities, because we have Las Fiestas de la Paloma and we have San Lorenzo. So each season has its own um, good part. So for weather reasons, I would say spring, that is more rainy, but uh, autumn is also a good solution to, to 
make a longer summer. If you want to visit Madrid in September and October, you can uh, increase your summer. So thank you for the answer. Jaime. Uh, yeah, so, so then I, I think that we check. are already 10 minutes uh, for, for the ending. So uh, yeah, we, we said that we were going to give two nights in the Hotel Nuevo Madrid. So I think we, we have already the winner, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so could, could you, Jose Luis or Dusan, inform who is the, the, the winner of this? Jose Luis, please. Jose Luis? Okay, in, mean, in the meantime, uh, and in order to finalize and to give the award to, 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 to our president to, to close the webinar as usual, uh, Anna, you need to give a, a last message why to go to Madrid. Very short and clear message. What you would say? Well, I would say that this uh, uh, vibrant city, very diverse, very welcoming, and um, it's always a surprise for those who visit Madrid for the first time. They are always astonished by the many things that the city has to offer. It's true that maybe Spain is somehow seen as a sun and beach destination, but uh, there are so many other uh, places that can be visited. And once again, we have to um, underline uh, the importance of the public transport in Spain and how easy it is to go from one city to the other in very few times. So uh, sometimes it's worth to spend extra five days in the country and then visit some extra city, not only Madrid, but also maybe some things in the surroundings or in the region or Toledo, Segovia, so, or even Seville. Or So I would say uh, do not consider only Spain, sun and beach, but also visit some cultural break, uh, break, for instance. That's clear and very good, and, and thank you. And, and we can add to that that, of course, they can trust that we are safe for the COVID uh, situation Definitely. and issues. So, good. you have already the winner for the for the two hotels. Yes, it's uh, Ms. Eva Martinsova. Good, congratulations, Eva. So Who is a winner lucky. of two nights in the Hotel Nuevo Madrid, which is the prize offered by uh, Destino Madrid, Spanish Chamber of Commerce, and the Hotel Nuevo Madrid. Okay, then I'm pretty sure that somebody will contact with. Uh, with Eva in order to see how to manage it. So then, uh, again, to say thank you to you, Anna, for this uh, opportunity to know more about Madrid and, and why uh, people from, from Czech Republic can really go there and enjoy uh, that city. And then, as you said, to go then from Madrid to other places in, in Spain to take the opportunity. So now I give the words to, to, to Carlos to close this, uh, this uh, webinar. Okay, thank you, Jaime. Okay, first, uh, congratulations, Eva Martinsova, uh, to, to win or you know, to this uh, entrance uh, to enjoy the hotel. Um, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the organization of this event. I hope, I hope you found, uh, found it interesting and useful. Though fam, yes, Eva, webinar level, Abilomi, Potieshenin, Suchasnitze. Thank you, it's and one of you uh, for your attention and I would like to close my remarks with our motto, uh, La Cámara para Todos, Comora Prosegni. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye everybody. Ciao. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.